the Ascent and Tower patch has brought some massive, massive changes to the other scrollers online, especially for damage dealing characters, where now we can use mag or stand morphs of skills, depending on which one we want to use, which one does the higher damage or has the most utility. This has changed a lot of different characters and DPS numbers are going up massively. And this is my first build video for that patch. So we're going to look at the Sorcerer. We're going to look at how we've hit over 121k DPS on the dummy and look at how we can set that up and make use of this new hybridization. So while I said there's loads and loads of big changes, there are still some bits that are familiar with the Sorcerer. So we're still 64 points into Magicka. Uh, we're still using Gaslit Eyeball as our food and we're still using the Thief Mondo Zone to maximize our critical chance stat. We we're also for our race, still a Dark Elf. I quite like Dark Elf because it's never really out of the top three. So while Kaji had its like moment in the sun and high often as well, Dark Elf's never really bad. So it's a safe bet if anything changes. We're still using Kimbers as our front bar set with a known home front hand and a charged off hand with poison and flame gifts. And instead of a staff, we're using the Maelstrom Greatsword for our back bar. Still infused and still with a weapon damage enchant on it. Um, but we're using this instead of the staff to make use of that merciless charged bleed proc when we cast a uh, stampede. Doesn't need to be perfected, normal is just fine. Uh, instead of bar slide, we're using reliquence. Again, doesn't need to be perfected because all uh, perfected gives you an extra line of stam. I just happen to have it in the inventory, really. Um, but we're using this for our single target dot uh, for the harmful winds that we keep up just by having good light weaving. Um, really, really powerful. We're using slime crawl in light, so we've got six light, one medium. You can have it on the head, I've just got it on the shoulders here. Uh, the harpoon is wading kilt, and then obviously our bloodthirsty jewels, all with spell damage enchants. So it's all divines, all mag enchants, and then spell damage on your jewelry. Um, this means with the six medium that we're maximizing our critical damage, but it does mean that in content, you're gonna have to be careful for penetration. So obviously the uh, perfected great sort gives you an extra line of pen there. So let's have a look at the skills. So our front bar is going to be quite familiar, but it's the back bar where there's going to be a majority of changes. So our main spammable is still going to be Crystal Fragments. Um, you're basically praying to get the purple proc of this where it casts instantly and does more damage. But make sure you're taking out uh, cast time into account when you're weaving it and using this as your main spammable. Uh, next, we have got Daedric Prey. So this makes your pets do more damage. It's a little bit of a dot and it blows up at the end. So you want to make sure that you let it run out because that's when it will explode. Because if you cast it too early, you'll lose that pop and you'll lose a lot of damage. So make sure you're not recasting that too early in your rotation. Next is Barb Trap, which is our source of minor force. Um, being on the front bar now instead of the back bar, that also means we get our fights to go passive for the extra spell damage on the front bar. We've also got on our front bar two pets, so the Volatile Familiar that you'll cast and the Twilight Tormentor that you won't. And then Flawless Dawnbreaker is our front bar ultimate that makes use of the Fighter's Guild passives and also we have cast and execute when we've not got enough time to build up to another Atro. On the back bar we've got Stampede, which is our Critical Charge Morph that lets us make use of the Maelstrom Greatsword. Um, nice long dot duration and make sure when you cast it you wiggle your left stick because then that movement stops you getting locked out of your skills. Carve, we're going to keep this up and instead of being more damage per stack like it used to be last patch, now it increases the duration with more stacks. When you get to three stacks, it lasts 30 seconds. This means we can spend a lot more time on our front bar spamming uh, crystal frags rather than applying dots on our back bar, which is where a lot of the damage comes from really, this patch and with this build. We've then got Hurricane, so we're using the stand morph of Boundless instead of the uh, Magical morph. This does more damage the longer it lasts. So you see there it does up to 160% more damage. So you want to make sure you're not recasting this too early because then that will reset to the base damage. So it will let this run out or be like literally about to run out before you sort of recast it. We've then on the back bar obviously got both of our pets again. So we've got our Twilight Tormentor and our Familiar. And then the Greater Storm Atron out. This is the ultimate you're going to cast the most in the rotation. So you're going to, you're going to, the one you're going to pre buff with and the one that you'll cast until you get to execute where you haven't got enough time to build it. For our champion points, we're changing this up as well. So last patch, we had Fight and Finesse and Backstabber for the blue tree, but we're going to change it up a little bit here. In the red tree as well, we don't need Sustain by Suffering anymore because they patched that. So we don't need the Vampire by uh, to get the extra recovery. So you can put whatever you want, basically, depending on the content. But we will use Rejuvenation just for the extra bit of recovery to make sure that we're not running out of resources. For the blue tree, we're changing it up a little bit. What has happened there? Blue tree, try again. We've got Master at Arms, Deadly Aim, Thaumaturge and Backstabber as our four slot balls. So we're dropping Fighting Finesse for Thaumaturge. Um, then in the green tree, it's all preference, but I'd go for Liquid Efficiency and Rushina to try and save yourself some money on pots and food for when you're running passes or in content. So with the rotation uh, on the dummy, we're going to cast Atro out of the way. 
You're then going to go trap and start your line weaving with Deidre Prey. Stampede, Carve and Hurricane. And we're now just going to cast frags unless something else needs reapplying. So you can see here I put Prey up as it popped. I've cast Carve again to make sure I've got more than one stack so it lasts long enough. You can cast your Scamp and your Deidre Prey roughly at the same time like you can see there. And I'm just going through looking at the timers and as something needs recasting as it's about to run out. You can see I'm reapplying it and then just casting frags the rest of the time. We don't really want to go for a static rotation this patch because the limit of dot timer that you can get with Carve and Stampede, um, this really is the time to sort of go dynamic. And with the source, we're having so few dots because it's literally just Stampede, Carve and Hurricane. And obviously praying trap as well, you could argue as well. But with such a small amount of skill with timers to keep an eye on, this is like a really good introduction to get into dynamic rotations that you can then take across to other characters that you might have later on. And so here we have one of the passes that I ran um, while I was making this video, just to sort of test out this setup and see how effective it was. You're looking at around 121k plus. Um, the highest I've got is 121.8. I have seen people with the exact same build hit 123, 124 you know, up to like 127k. So the limiting factor here isn't the build, it's me being crap at playing Sorcerer, basically. Um, but you can see here how I go through dynamically casting the skills um, and get as much time spamming frags as I can. So you'll see an execute, when I've not got time to cast another Rapture, I cast Dawnbreaker when it comes up instead. And then as executes running down, I don't reapply dots as I'm not gonna get the full time out of them and just blast the life out the dummy with frags instead until it is dead. And that is my source of build for the Ascending Tower patch. It has been a little bit of time since I made a video because I was just waiting for the new patch to come out. And I've been super, super busy um, at work and with sort of like my sporting stuff as well and things like that. Um, so it's, we're finally back. Thank you for like not chilling me off while I've been away. Um, subscribers and views have been generally pretty steady and going up even while I've not been posting. So that's awesome, thank you. Uh, if this has been helpful, please do like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Um, next one will be Necromancer and that should be coming out shortly. So now the patches out, I'm going to be both feeding these videos out to try and update all my build videos. Any questions, please do drop me a message um, or comment on the video and I'll do my best to reply. And have fun blasting stuff as a sorcerer.